Hey everybody, welcome back to Intuition. Like I promised you guys, I'm keeping the videos coming every week. And if you're new to this channel, this channel focuses on problem solving to help us develop a better understanding of math and science. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button and become part of our Intuition family. In today's video, we're gonna be answering two pharmacokinetics questions. Stay tuned. Okay, so let's get it. So today we're gonna to answer two pharmacokinetics questions. Pharmacokinetics is a simple concept. It's just the kinetics of drug distribution within the body. So it's a study of what the body does to the drug when the drug is absorbed. So let's answer two questions. Question number one. Question number one says, a drug displaying first order pharmacokinetics has a half-life of five hours. What is the elimination rate constant for this drug? As always, we gotta make sure that we understand the question before we dive into trying to answer, answer the question. We have a drug that displays first order pharmacokinetics. Well, what is first order pharmacokinetics? First order kinetics is a drug whose rate of change or rate of elimination is directly proportional to the drug's concentration raised to the power of one. That's why it's called first order. If it was raised to the power of zero, that would be zero order kinetics. And what would be zero order kinetics? Zero order kinetics would be a drug whose rate of elimination does not depend on the drug concentration. The kidneys would say, you know what? I'm just gonna eliminate two milligrams every hour of this drug. I don't care what the concentration inside the body is. I don't care if you have a, a lot of drug inside. I'm just going to eliminate two milligrams every hour that would be zero order kinetics. The rate of elimination is constant. First order kinetics is also given the name of linear kinetics. Now, I just told you guys that for first order kinetics, the rate of change is directly proportional to the drug concentration. So what's the rate of change of the drug concentration? That would be the derivative, right, of the drug concentration. So that would be DC DT, which would be the rate of change of the drug concentration, is directly proportional, is directly proportional to the drug concentration. So that would be equal to minus K, which would just be a constant times the drug concentration. And it's minus because the drug is being eliminated. So why do we call first order kinetics linear? The rate of change has a linear relationship with the drug concentration. So once we know that that's what first order kinetics is, that's all we need. Now, how do we solve this equation? This is a very simple differential equation. So we have DC DT on the left side and we have minus KC on the right side. We can multiply both sides by DT. DT will be the differential change in time. So multiplying both sides by dt on the left hand side, you'll get what? You'll just have dc equals minus kc times dt. On the left hand side, we have a differential of the concentration. On the right hand side, we have a differential of time. But on the right hand side, we also have the drug concentration. So what we want to do is we want to take the drug concentration from the right side over to the left side because the differential on the left side is a differential of concentration. So we divide both sides by c and this gives us on the left hand side, we have one over C times DC equals minus K times DT. Now the change in concentration divided by the concentration itself is equal to a constant called K minus K times the corresponding differential change in time. So if we wanna get a finite change in concentration and a finite change in time, we do the integral of both sides, okay? So on the left hand side, we'll do the integral of one over C DC and we're gonna integrate from some initial concentration, call it C initial, to some final concentration called C final. And that's going to be equal to the integral of minus K times DT. And we're going to integrate over the initial time. We're gonna start time at zero and we're interested in some time T. So that's gonna be from zero to T. And then now these are very easy integrals to do. What's the integral of one over C? The integral of one over C is natural log. So we'll have the natural log, natural log of the final concentration minus the natural log of the initial concentration. That's going to be equal to the natural log of the final concentration divided by the initial concentration. And that's going to be equal to negative K times time. There's a linear relationship between the natural log of the relative change in concentration and time and they're proportionate by a constant minus K. So it's not a linear relationship between the drug concentration and time, there's a linear relationship between the log of the drug concentration and time. Now, we're told that this drug has a half-life of five hours. What does that mean? That means that 
the drug concentration is cut in half every five hours. So our initial concentration was C initial. And then five hours later, what will be the drug concentration? It will be one half C initial. And now we just need to solve for K. We just divide both sides by minus T. So we divide both sides by minus T. C final over C initial is equal to one half. So in the numerator, we have the natural log of one half divided by minus five. And that's going to be equal to K. And when we plug that into our calculator, what do we get? We get 0.138 hours to the negative one power. And that's approximately 0.14. Easy. Our answer is A. Let's move on to question number two. Question number two states, the previous drug with a half-life of five hours is being infused into a patient at a rate of 10 milligrams per hour. If the drug has a volume of distribution of six liters, what will be the drug concentration at steady state? So this is a follow-up question from the first question. So we're talking about the same drug that has a half-life of five hours. Now this drug is being infused into a patient at a certain rate. As this drug is being infused into the patient, drug is going to accumulate in the patient's body. But at the same time, the drug is also being eliminated. So the drug is being infused and eliminated at the same time. So there's going to be a concentration where the rate of infusion and the rate of elimination are equal. And when those two rates are equal, the concentration is going to be steady or constant in the body. And we're being asked to find that concentration. So we just have to set our rate of infusion equal to our rate of elimination and solve for the concentration. So let's do that. Our rate of infusion is given to us, that's constant. That's 10 milligrams per hour. And what is our rate of elimination? Well, we just got that from the previous problem, right? We know that the drug is being eliminated according to the equation K times the drug concentration, Kc. But we're given the infusion in terms of the amount of drug per time. But on the right-hand side, we have the change. We have the change in concentration per time. We're missing something. So what do we have to do to the right-hand side to get that to be amount of drug eliminated per time. We just have to multiply the concentration times the volume of distribution because concentration times volume is equal to the drug amount. And therefore that's going to give us the amount of drug being eliminated per unit time. So on the left hand side, we have amount of drug being infused per unit time. And on the right hand side, we have amount of drug being eliminated per unit time. And so we have 10 is equal to KC times V volume of distribution. Okay, now to solve for C, C is going to be equal to 10 divided by KV. And what's K? K was 0.14 hours to the negative one power. And V, we're given that the volume of distribution is six liters. But if you look at our answer choices, they're all in milliliters. So we're going to change six liters to 6,000 milliliters, right? Milli means 10 to the negative three. So 6,000 milliliters is the same as six liters. Okay. So we have 10 divided by 0.14 times 6,000. So plugging that into our calculator, we get 0.0119 milligrams per milliliters. But if we round that up, we get 0.012 milligrams per milliliters. And that will be the steady state drug concentration. Clearly our answer will be answer choice B, okay? And that's how you do these problems. I hope that was helpful. I'll keep these videos coming, like I said. For those of you who have just graduated, congratulations. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and become part of our science family here. Uh, we're going to become geniuses together. So keep watching, keep learning, and as always, be easy. Bye-bye. <laughs>